Okay. So actually, could you state your name, your profession, and your opinion of what I'm about to show the people? <laughs> sure. My name is Chris Walling. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I'm an academic healthcare executive. Um, so primarily, you know, what I'm observing here is that, especially at the top of the skull, that hole, would appear to be consistent with some of the other skulls who have trauma, um, whereupon in ancient times, pri you know, the primary mechanism of surgery was to remove illness or spirit by really essentially creating a hole in the skull. This was a common medicinal practice that you saw throughout um, ancient Incan cultures and a lot of indigenous cultures. Um, it was believed to be that that would relieve the negative spirit and allow the person to heal. Um, and that would be consistent with what I'm seeing here. This doesn't appear to be congenital or anything that is necessarily from birth, um, but rather happened uh, much later on after the development of the form. Uh -huh. um, but you have an extraordinary um, increase in the size, particularly of, of where you would see executive function in the brain, because that's where the largest part has sort of come out in 180 degrees on both sides, which would appear to not be necessarily from adulteration, but much more from evolution. Yeah. Um, however, the cracks in the skull, and maybe it's because the museum has done that, there appears to be some form of adhesion that's been put there to try to keep it together that's not part of the artifact itself. Right, yeah, he, uh, <coughs> Senior Renato did that in order to keep the skull together. Right. So do you think you're looking at an example of cranial deformation, or possibly that this this person was, uh, could have been born this way? This is born this way. Born this way. Oh, yeah. And the dentition, the teeth? Now that That's kind of odd, because even the, the mismatch of the coloration has got me kind of uh, concerned that it's inconsistent because typically even with decalcification of most um, artifact that you find in teeth particularly considering they didn't have good dental care <laughs> even at that time you're not going to see that level of of white compared uh -huh. to the rest of the skull you would see a consistency between the coloration and the how old would you estimate this person would have been at the time of death well, that's difficult to say um, because it's completely inconsistent with any typical, you know, fetal evolution. So, uh -huh. I, I can't even guess. Hmm. Do you see a difference in the the size or the or the presumed age of the skull as compared to the development of the teeth? Yes. Now that would indicate that you know you're looking at at least anywhere from eight to ten years of age. But even the molars are so huge that could be even late teens, early adult. It's a mismatch for me. And that's not consistent with the size of the body? No, it's not. Does it have the normal uh, rib, number of ribs? And the intercostals like appear to also have experienced some form of trauma or have been severed at some point, um, particularly in the upper rib cage. The first, second, and third ribs appear to be severed uh, from some device because you'll see the exposed bone has been cut, whereas the lower... Um, ribs are completely intact. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what's, what about number? Yeah, how about yeah, the, now number, the number you've got, from what I can see, you can see in the mirror. you've got a floating rib down here, which we all still have today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Which is inconsistent Which is with? inconsistent with most homo sapiens. What, what, what do most people have? Um, well, it depends. Some people have an extra rib. Um, it, it just depends on the individual Typically, you're looking at anywhere from six. Sometimes people will have as most as seven, but never, never at this size in terms of development. So we got more ribs going. You've got then. more ribs going than you would normally have for that form. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I'm, I was looking at, at in the mirror at, at the back, and it just seemed oh, like I didn't even catch yeah, the mirror. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> no, if you yeah. catch the mirror, yeah, you can yeah, really yeah. see the you know them coming. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, almost ten. You've got ten. That's really weird. Uh, really? That's really weird. I, I, I'm looking and thinking, I don't know a it's lot about anatomy. It's completely genetically inconsistent. I, I don't know a lot about <laughs> anatomy, but it, it looked weird. Yeah. So thank you for backing yeah, that up. Yeah, it is. Thank it's completely you. weird. And, you know, 
function follows form, right? All right. throughout nature, meaning sure. nature doesn't grow an arm unless the arm's going to be used, and nature isn't going to develop an intercostal unless there's something to protect. So that would indicate that the organs are displaced, uh, maybe even reversed. That's kind of what that would tell me. You know, the reason that the rib cage forms here with such cortical because tension is because it's protecting the heart, the heart and right? And lungs, yeah. But this appears to be inversed, right? Oh yeah, they, they get bigger as they go down. Right. So that inverse relationship tells me that oh, the do, organs might they? actually be inversed as well. Wow. So the heart is below... Might, the heart might be down right. where our kind of where our stomach now is. Right. Or even closer to the cervical spine. Because, you know, your, your mediasternum is here, right. and you've got almost a superficial mediastinum that's developed on back where the spine would actually be, so in terms of formation. Uh -huh. So, it's really strange. <laughs> so in terms of the skull and the drawing, do you see any possible relationship, or is that too simplistic? It's a big of a leap, <laughs> because... Um, if you were to place tissue in and around the nose, it's going to come a lot higher. And I would imagine that there's going to be cartilage that's formed on this one just because of the place of where the jaw line is coming in. Uh -huh. So there's absolutely no cartilage on this artistic representation on the right. It seems to be simply just like a Chinese pug, like a dog, with no cartilage formation of the nose at all. Whereas this skull is going to have some cartilage. There's no reason for there to be bone protruding that far out without there being some sort of superficial nose that comes out a little bit further. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Also, I'm looking at the, the drawing, and it doesn't seem to accommodate for the teeth. No. It kind of, it's kind of pretending the teeth aren't right. there, too. This guy's gumming it <laughs> on the right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this guy isn't. And this it, guy isn't, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we are, in your opinion, though, we're definitely not looking at a homo sapiens. You're not. Now, if you are, you're looking at one that has severe genetic malformations. Mm -hmm. In other and words, that the genes are not assimilating in a typical mutation. Plus, they're out huh? under a microscope. Even. And they found this near here, hey, Ryan? Yeah, he found it on top of the mountain in a graveyard, you know, on the side of a, a recently excavated grave or plundered tomb. Mm. Was it wrapped in some material? Uh, no, it was just kind of left like that. But do you see what I mean by the joint articulation here? Yeah, it's very weird. It doesn't follow any sort of consistency in, unless it's a quadrupedal organism. What the, you're talking about the, the arm? Yeah, so a quadrupedal organism is going to need far more joint articulation lower on you know, what would be the tibular mm -hmm. intersection. Mm -hmm. So here, yeah. in order to have spring. Yeah. To be able to run, yeah. you know, on all fours. But, that, so, but it's still not looking like anything we know on the planet. Well, it could. I mean, yeah. this, this could be, um, you know, a weird dog corpse with a skull placed on top of it. Dogs have that many ribs? Usually, some breeds can, yeah. Okay. Well, he's actually taken it out before, and I photographed it. I, I can send you the photos. And it's connected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the uh, you know the spinal column goes straight up, straight up through, wow. and it's not. There was no sign of it being glued on or or shoved on or anything like that. But unfortunately, you know the hands and feet. And but it does, still doesn't explain why we don't have a vertebral vertebral column back right, there. Right. Does it? No, it doesn't. 